Hi there and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video we're discussing Past Crimes, written by Jason Pinter. It's a sci-fi, and it's a cold case mystery and techno thriller. A strange combination, but it works in this story. It's set in 2037, so not too distant future. The setting is dystopian, but also quite vibrant, so it's a mixture in this world. The vibrancy, a lot of that comes from technology. And dystopian nature, the kind of like the grey elements in this story, come from the environment. So in this book, the environment is getting quite destroyed, quite run down. And that's because just of, you know, climate change and things like that, they get described in this story. But the vibrancy comes from technology. The main concept in this book is what makes it quite fascinating. In this story, true crime is the biggest commodity in this world. Everybody loves true crime. There's true crime movies, documentaries, there's true crime virtual reality. There's even a true crime theme park in this world. True crime runs the world, makes the world go round. And in this story, the author explores what happens to the people who are you know, the subjects of these true crime stories. What happens to them, the survivors, how are they treated? How is having their story out there in the world, and how they're betrayed by people, how does that impact their lives? The start of this book is an amazing hook. So our protagonist, Cassie, she's driving home from work. And in this book, in the start of this story, she works for a company that represents survivors of true crime events. So almost like agents for them, gets their story and sells their story to the highest bidder, basically. And they often take advantage of these people as well. So they're seen, and Cassie is seen like this at the start of the story, they're seen like kind of like girls, you know, who are fighting over scraps of food, these scraps of stories, that try to get those stories and get money off them, you know, make the biggest deals. And they all work so hard to do that. It seems so natural to them, and they don't think anything about it. They're used to it. They think it's normal, because everybody seems to be doing it in this world. That's what Cassie's like at the start of this story. So anyway, she's driving home. Her husband is at home already. He works from home, I think. And she's driving there and she sees her house is on fire and there's all these, you know, emergency vehicles around. She can't get into her house or near her house. She finds out her husband's in the house and he's dying in that fire. Then we jump 10 years into the future. And in 10 years time, we find out a bit more. We find out that Cassie's husband is alleged to be a leader of some sort of cult. And we find that on this night when he died, you know, thousands more fires were lit around the country or the world, and they're all part of this same cult or group. And so people are blaming Cassie's husband as being the instigator of this mass event. Cassie, 10 years later, she's jobless, she's friendless. She's like a pariah basically, because people blame her for what her husband did. So she's scraping by, she's doing things to scrape by, but she finds out something. She finds out something that leads her to think that her husband is not guilty of what people say he's guilty of 10 years ago. That leads her down this path in this story, this cold case path to try to find out the truth. Cassie then has to sell the rights to her, her name, her image, her life to a company that makes true crime stories and VR and things like that. And she sells that to the biggest company in the world that does that. The reason she has to do that is because they've got the rights to everything else about this crime that happened. Because in this world, if you commit a crime, any company can use your image, your history, everything about you in any true crime, VR, movie, whatever. They can use that because you've committed a crime. You have no rights to stop that. If you're a survivor still alive and haven't committed a crime, the only way people can do that, use your image, is you selling those rights to them. So to find out the truth about her husband and what her husband was alleged to do 10 years ago, Cassie has to sell her rights, the rights of herself that can be injected into this story about her husband to this company. That's where it's quite interesting because Cassie used to do that 10 years ago. She used to convince people to sell their rights to use their image and face and things in stories. Now she's a victim of that. We get to see how that impacts her in this story. 
she's experienced both sides of the coin, if you will. And when she's the person 10 years later, it's being done to her. I think she feels quite differently about what she used to do 10 years ago. I'm not going to give away anything else about the plot in this video. But in general, the book is quite immersive. So the author describes technology, new technology he's imagined in this book. And I like those ideas in this story. They're inventive. They're described very well. They feel so vibrant in this dystopian world that can feel so grey and sometimes dangerous. This technology feels so vibrant, so fresh, clean, so shiny. It's so different in this story, that contrast. But you're immersed into the story because of that. Because technology is described very well and how people think about technology and react to it is described well as well. Also, the ideas about how addicted people are to true crime. That's a big idea in this story. It's described very well, it's very strong, also draws you into the book. What drew me in because I do like true crime stories. I think that's why some of this you know, really relates to me in this book, because I can see true crime getting bigger and bigger all the time. And I can imagine that sometime in the future, it could be the biggest industry in the world. The mystery is clever in this book. I thought it very well done. Keeps you guessing. There are some good twists and turns. Everything plays out in the story in a controlled way. So I enjoyed the mystery a lot. Now the pace of this book. The first half of the book, the pace is spot on. Very fast. It suits the style of the story. Then we get to the second part of the story and the pace drops. But it's a shame because I was enjoying the story so much. The pace just made the story flow so well in the first half. In the second half, it gets bogged down a bit. It's a bit slow. And also in the second half of the story, the protagonist doesn't make things happen. It's like the protagonist is dragged along for that second half of the story. That felt strange to me as well. It's like those two halves of the same story are in direct contrast to each other. And a lot of that is because of pace and also just how the plot positions the main character in this book. Cassie, our protagonist, is a good character, and I prefer her character in the first half of the book. She's stronger there. In the second half, it's almost like things happen to her. She's not driving things in the story. But overall, consistent, except for that kind of second half little blip, but a good character in that first half. And that's how I like to think about this character in the first half of the book, where she's strong, where she's brave and courageous, where she kind of doesn't give a damn sometimes in the story. That's the stronger version of the character. And I like that strong version of the character in this book a lot. Crispin is the founder of this huge company, the biggest company in the world that makes true crime. True crime VR, movies, even a true crime theme park. As a character, he is almost like a supervillain. That's how he comes across in the story. Sometimes that can be a bit cheesy, and it is a little bit in this story. But overall, he's a good character. He's engaging. You wonder about him. You wonder how evil he could be. There's doubt around him. Sometimes he comes across as being nice and kind, but you wonder, you're all the time you wonder what's underneath. That's how the character's written in the book. So written very well, and his character's used quite well in the story. Ali is a teenager that Cassie comes across and kind of recruits in her crusade to find out the truth about her husband. As a character, Ali feels like a real teenager. She's a teenager in the story, acts like a teenager, thinks like a teenager, reacts like a teenager. Everything about her screams teenager. So well done on that because some authors write teenagers and children above their years. But in this book, the way the character acts and reacts and talks, everything about the character in this story matches her age. Very strong character, very brave, but there's kind of vulnerable side to Ellie in this story as well. And that makes her feel more complex, more well-rounded, and just a more real character in this world. I did enjoy this book. It's the first time I've read this author, but it won't be the last time. I do want to go back and read other books he's written in the past. I rate this a 3.5 out of 5. Very interesting concept in this book. I like the fact that he's thinking about true crime as this kind of force of nature that's getting bigger and bigger all the time and how true crime can impact other people in a negative way. I like that it's set in the near future as well. We have certain elements in the story that make sense to current day. That we have, you know, different tech and future things happening and a little bit of dystopian things happening in the world as well. So it makes you wonder, you know, what could happen in that bridge of time? 
between now and then. On my channel, I review other sci-fi books. If you enjoy sci-fi, check out my channel and subscribe. On the screen now is a link to a video for another book I'm sure you'll enjoy.